It's review time, y'all. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that was. Anyway, this is Wrestle Kingdom 6 from Tokyo Dome. Review. I guess it was in Tokyo Dome, but, you know, whatever. This was obviously from the Big Egg. Uh, apparently 43,000 people. Uh, that's not bad at all. If it's true, I mean, it was it was definitely close to that because it sounded pretty solid. But, you know, obviously it wasn't TNA heat. It was legitimate crowd reaction. All right, our opener was for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championships. Championship. Davey Richards, Rocky Romero, Norman Morse Corps versus Prince Devitt, Taguchi Ryosuke, Apollo 55. Apollo 55 came out in their, uh, they came out the 2001 Space Odyssey initially, and <laughs> they were in their, uh, full astronaut gear. I don't know, it looked kind of like the ship from Armageddon, but shitty movie. Anyway, uh, it was pretty cool, and, uh, yeah, this was, uh, I, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. This was a spot fest. Having said that, this was the best spot fest or any match in their series, in my opinion. Uh, I, they gave the fans exactly what they wanted. It's a perfect opener. Did WCW do this all the time? Yep, it worked. It's often their opener was the best part of their show because they'd have some piece of shit main event, but... They'd have that great opener that everyone talked about for the Cruiserweight title or whatever. This is very similar to that. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of great storytelling. It was just... Fuck, Chikara did a four-way. Nothing but continuous spots. No real... There was like a little subplot, which is really fucking stupid. But yeah, there was nothing... There was no rhyme or reason, really. So, uh... New Japan just did that, but had a better match. That's all they did. And uh, I don't know what to score. It. Perfect opener. That's that's less controversial, I guess. Then we had Aerial Kingdom featuring uh, CMLL Super Estrellas, or whatever the fuck they want to call them. Jushin Thunder Liger, Mascara Dorada. Kushida and Tiger Mask War versus Taka Michinoku, Taichi, Atlantis, and Valiante? Pretty sure it's Valiante. Or Valiante. It's something like that. Like Kellyante. I don't know. Uh, only two or three big botches in this, which uh, makes it actually watchable. So, I mean, usually when luchadors come to other promotions, they're too ignorant to the style of that promotion and... Yeah. A lot of people say that uh, with, with Sin Cara, the reason why it doesn't work in WWE is because no, properly, is because no one knows the Mexican style in WWE, which is bullshit because you're supposed to adapt when you're visiting another country, especially if they hire you. Uh, Dorada did it all right. Uh, the Rudos uh, came out to this pussy ass dance music that my brother listens to and just. You can't take them serious when they come out to that. I don't know who was by, but it, fucking cut off your testicles if you listen to that shit. Uh, yeah, some weird mascot came out with uh, the face team, the, the good guys, but whatever, the Technicos. And um, I don't know, Liger came out, the crowd just popped. Like, they gave the legend the reaction he deserved. It was, uh, yeah. Pretty uh, loud for Junior, but Liger is the greatest Junior of all time, so it makes sense. Uh, this got, this match started at Bui Caliente, it's a little Spanish. Uh, it was good, and there was a little mask removal spot where all three uh, Technicos had their masks nearly removed. and After that, the momentum was kind of killed, and the match went too long. It was like almost two different matches in one. Everyone did this. They did the spot where every single wrestler doesn't die, which is so typical in Lucha. It's it's kind of annoying. But uh, the last guy botched it seriously, and I don't know. Two old guys in this match weren't very good. The ending was anticlimactic, but there was there was good points in this match. Those points being Liger, Kushida, Taka, and Taichi. Sorry, Mexican wrestlers, you just did not cut it tonight. Or oh, sorry, that night. All right, then we had New Japan, Respiration, Okada, Kazuchiko versus Yoshihashi, which, the way it's spelled and everything, is kind of fucking stupid. 
Obviously, TNA thought of it. Um, this is proof that TNA makes you soft. Uh, I don't think even Christ himself could resurrect these guys. Um, actually, you know, Yoshihashi was good, but other than looking like a 2012 Genghis Khan, uh, he, was, uh, he wasn't that bad. Uh, Okada looks like an older Zach Morris, you know, in Japanese. Uh, Time out. He's just, uh, Okada really didn't impress. I mean, he was uh, he was better than last year, but last year he was, I mean, shit, he was almost as bad as Jeff Hardy. Now, Okada did nothing for me, and uh, that's going to piss everyone off at the end of this video. Trust me. Then we had Blue Justice, Never Die, uh, Nagata Yuji, Yinoue Wataru versus Funaki Masakatsu, Kono Masayuki, Masayuki Kona, I, I don't know. Uh, this is about 65%. Um, yeah, I was kind of surprised by this. Uh, I was actually pretty damn shocked uh, how good this was. I mean, especially for a match right around 10 minutes long, I mean, everything just clicked in this. And you know, it was at his rare best, which, you know, it doesn't happen a lot, but he worked really well in this match. Especially the guy who could hang, but couldn't quite hang. And Nagata and Funaki are, I mean, <laughs> holy shit, the hatred between these guys. You would think there's been a few bar fights between these guys, I mean, great shit. And, uh, by the way, uh, Nakajima's KO of Suzuki doesn't have shit on a kick in this fight. Think Miracle Krokov. Uh, yeah, Nagata and Funaki are definitely going to feud singles. Uh, either that or they just legitimately <laughs> hate each other and that wasn't supposed to happen. Then we had Tokyo Monster War, Tanaka Masato, Takahashi Yujiro, Complete Players versus MVP, Shelton Benjamin. I'm going to give this a 60%. I think it's one of the highest scores this match has got. Um, I don't know. This got it started explosively. It was fun. It was... Uh, Good times. Um, MVP is more athletic than I remember him being. He's like more athletic than The Rock now. And, uh, yeah, it's Benjamin pulled out his ooh ah type of stuff, and he you know he was good for what he did. Uh, it wasn't like ROH where he's wrestling like 20 minutes and you just want to die already. MVP was clearly the star of this match, but you know Tanaka was good and Takahashi did his part. And, uh, yeah, in my opinion, this was the best MVP performance in uh, New Japan, and I might get heat for that assessment, but that's how I saw it. I think he's a future WWE champion if he goes back, and if he stays in New Japan, I think he'll at least get a shot in the main event at the IWGP Heavyweight. Alright, then we had our first great match of the night, IWGP Tag Team Championships, Giant Bernard, Carl Anderson, Bad Intentions versus Tenzan Hiro Hiroshi and Kojima Satoshi. Tenkoji, uh, like four stars, 80%. Uh, bad intentions are arguably, they arguably have, like, they arguably had, sorry, the greatest entrance in New Japan history. I mean, uh, maybe not, but it was pretty cool. They had a bazooka and a machine gun, and then when they fired at the screen and the effects happened, I, they might have done it last year. I didn't see the entrances last year then, but yeah. I don't know, this tag match is just classic New Japan. It reminded me of kind of like a Steiner Brothers, uh, you know, LOD type against, like, you know, Japanese guys. It was kind of like that. Um, yeah, I was into this match. It delivered. I physically got involved with the react to the near falls. I was like, ow. Oh. You know, bad intentions are my, are my, are my boys kind of in a way. that I, I don't actually know them. Other than Twitter. But, uh, you know, Tenzan and Kojima, I had to go with them because Tenzan takes such a good beating and you want him to win and Kojima just gets a hot tag. And I don't know, this match was just really good and I liked it. I don't think I'm the only one. Then we had Fighting Without Honor or Humanity, Takeyama Yoshihiro versus Makabe Togi. 67%, very good match. Uh, you got to love uh, the Japanese subtitles, right? And, uh, yeah, this matchup, so, you know, there's a lot to love. This wasn't going to be a technical classic, but it was a brawl between two guys that just don't like each other, 
uh, they like nothing more than to cause bodily harm. I mean, if there's not head trauma, these guys aren't happy. <laughs> they like to break bones. And, uh, they may well have done it. The end of this match is brutal in a good way. And uh, yeah, good match. Then we had NJPW versus Noah, Battle Concentration 2, Nakamura Shinsuke, Yano Toru versus Shizaki Go and Marafuji Naomichi. 62%. Uh, some people like this match more, but I think, um, I don't know. I'm probably, when Shiozaki came out and his name was introduced, if the music wasn't playing, you could probably hear yen drop. And I'm not talking about coins, I'm talking about paper. You would have heard, you would have heard like a hundred yen drop. I mean, Shiozaki's not getting reactions at Noah. He's not getting them in New Japan. The last time Shiozaki got a reaction was probably when he was in ROH. He's a great wrestler, but he's just not. There's something off, and uh, Morishima needs to get that belt. On to the match itself. I thought Marafuji was pretty good. I thought uh, Nakamura was really good. And I thought Yano Toru was the best part of this match. And uh, he just made it work. And, you know, this. Match progressed and it got better and better. Shiozaki got more into it, got a little more of a reaction. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I applaud uh, all four men for the uh, display of wrestling. And, yeah, like I said, 62%. Then we had Genius faces Genius, Muto Keiji versus Naito Tatsuya. And this match did about as much for me as a naked man covered in oil, which is nothing, as I'm a straight male. Muto was literally 98 point something percent Shining Wizard, and the rest were, I don't know, like, you know when people scramble for a position? That, but like in slow motion and keeping the same position for like two fucking minutes. I mean, it was agonizing watching this shit. I don't care what the crowd sounded like. The crowd, even the crowd, I think, were kind of mesmerized. They just wanted Muto to win. They didn't care about anything really. Whatever. They got behind Naito a little bit because he was getting his ass kicked so bad, looking like a pussy. But I don't know. Ten years ago, this uh, that Muto, you know, I wanted to retire. And today, uh, I'm not a religious man, but I may pray. So maybe he actually fucking retires. It's pretty bad. Big, fat, fucking dud. Then we had our main event, a true main event. IWGP Heavyweight Championship, Tanahashi Hiroshi, the champion, versus the challenger, Suzuki Minoru. Uh, this match is just oozing with that big match feel. Uh, yeah, I was expecting a better um, match, but, you know, I shouldn't have because this is the best match Suzuki could have got at Tanahashi, in my humble opinion. Not that humble, maybe a little... Um, yeah, that, that was, it, I mean, this match was good, and, uh, Suzuki was great, his, just his aggression and his mannerisms and his toughness, and then ta how Tana reacted to it, but Tanahashi didn't quite, he was getting tagged with punches at certain points, and he wasn't throwing them back, which, I mean, if you would have thrown those punches, he would have got the pops, because the fans are going to boo you if you're retaliating. But, you know, if Tanahashi doesn't, he, um, you know, he has some holes in his game, surprisingly, for how long he's been around. But, I don't know, he was a good hero in this, I guess. And, uh, yeah, Suzuki was perfect as the villain. Yeah, there could have been a few changes with Tanahashi, but, I mean, Suzuki pretty much, Suzuki and Minoru pretty much wrestled a perfect match, right? Still, I said this was a very solid, great match. 79% plus, maybe 80. Uh, I expected more, but you know what? Hey, that's a lot from Tanahashi. I don't. I, I've lowered my expectations a little bit because he, he is a good wrestler, but you know he's not he's not at Nagata level uh, even. He's he's definitely not at Suzuki's level. He's um I don't know probably a little behind Takayama. And Takayama's old now. Alright, uh, that's been my uh, video and my, my review, or whatever, and uh, my hair is fucked. Alright, I'm out. Peace.